Welcome to part 2 of 5, detailing the 2007 Super Bowl Championship New York Giants season. We start off part 2 with a week 5 clash against the crosstown rival New York Jets. The Giants came into this game at 2-2, two two, the Jets came into the game at 1-3, and, and the Giants were a 4 point favorite. The Giants started off slow in this game and were down 17-7 at the half, and were already hearing boos from the Giants fans that were in attendance at this game. However, in the second half, the Giants turned it around, outscoring the Jets 28-7. This touchdown run right here by Brandon Jacobs started off the second half well for the Giants, and then Plaxico Burris and Jeremy Shockey took over from there, as you'll see right here. Manning hits Plax, and this is what they did in the second half. They just wore down the Jets, but he will hit Plaxico Burris right here on a 53-yard touchdown pass down the sideline. Burris had a big day with five catches for 124 yards and a touchdown. Dances right on into the end zone. And Jeremy Shockey right here will also catch a 13-yard pass for a touchdown. He had two catches for 33 yards and that touchdown right there. And then towards the tail end of the game, rookie First round draft pick Aaron Ross sealed the game for New York with this pick six on a 43 yard interception return that put the game away for the Giants and they went on to win the game 35 to 24 and they won their third game in a row and were playing very good football. Okay, on to week six. The Giants at three and two faced the Falcons at one and four. The Giants were a five and a half point favorite down in Atlanta, and they really controlled this game from the outset. The Giants were up 21 to 10 at the half, and the Falcons never scored another point after the first quarter. The Giants dominated this game, winning it 31 to 10. Amani Toomer, Plaxico Burris, Ruben Drones, Derek Ward all had touchdowns in this game, and the Giants went on to win their fourth consecutive game. Eli Manning threw for 303 yards and two touchdowns and the running combination of Ruben Drones, Brandon Jacobs and Derek Ward produced enough offense for the Giants. And Ahmad Bradshaw did not see any action early on in the season. If you're wondering where he is and you remember him being a big contributor late in the season, he was not used as a running back until Ward went down with his injury. So we'll see him a little bit later. The next week we travel back home to the Meadowlands to face the 49ers. The 49ers came in at 2-3. and three. The Giants were now 4-2. and two, And the Giants were 9.5 point favorites at home. This was another game that the Giants got off to a good start. They led 19-7 at the half. Touchdowns in this game were scored by Amani Toomer, Brandon Jacobs, Jeremy Shockey. And you'll see a, a tremendous defensive play from O.C. Humanura a little bit later on in this clip. But the Giants had another victory here, their fifth in a row. Trent Dilfer, the quarterback for the 49ers here. Eli really had a subpar day, though, throwing only for 146 yards and two touchdowns, but the defense did its job. Jacobs had over 100 yards rushing, and the 49ers seemed helpless to stop the Giants. Here is OCU Manura's play. The sack, the strip, the recovery, and he's going to take it all the way in for the 75 yard touchdown and the giants were on their way to another victory and they were rolling now this was the soft part of the schedule but the giants were doing what they were supposed to be doing and winning these games beating the bad teams which takes us to london and another bad team big blue blast yes an interesting ticket here this is the london game this was the first regular season NFL game that was played outside of North America. So this is where all the London games started, right here in 2007. The Giants were a 10-point favorite because the Dolphins were 0-7 at this point. So this was a game that the Giants should have won easily, but struggled. This was one of the memorable plays coming up here from the game. Eli Manning back to pass. Can't find anybody. Can't find anybody. It takes him about 20 minutes to run from the 15-yard line and into the end zone. Running like a deer. For his second rushing touchdown of his career. Takes him a while to get in there. You know, this is not Lamar Jackson here. But he gets into the end zone, beating Jason Taylor to the corner. And scores the touchdown for New York. And that was pretty much it for this game. 
Lawrence Tynes kicked two field goals. But nothing else really to write home about offensively. The defense did its job in shutting down the Dolphins. Um, but Eli really had a terrible day in this game. The weather didn't cooperate, but he was 8 of 22 for a measly 59 yards passing. Brandon Jacobs ran the ball 23 times for 131 yards. So very efficient on the ground. Ruben Drones also chipped in with eight carries, but the Giants offense did nothing. And I will give anyone listening to this a million dollars if you can tell me who the starting running back for the Dolphins was that day without looking it up. Put it in the comments. I, I got nothing. <laughs> anyway, this Dolphins team ended the season 1-15. Their starting quarterback was Cleo Lemon, Marty Booker was on this team, Patrick Cobbs, Justin Peel, Derek Hagan, Ted Ginn Jr., Aaron Halterman. These were their starters for this game. This was not a very good showcase game for London if the NFL was trying to get London fans interested in the NFL product. Having this Dolphin team over there and the Giants playing like absolute trash was not a very good selling point. Again, the Giants struggle, but they do get the win. Well, thank you very much for watching. Part 3 should be coming out shortly. I hope you've enjoyed this look back at the Giants Super Bowl run. If you do, subscribe, ring the bell, all that good stuff, and I'll see you for Part 3.